making the right first impression. Okay, making the right first impression. Now, here's the thing about first impressions. And first of all, first impressions are pretty, uh, pretty. They're, they're they're obviously critical when prospecting, right? But here's the rub: it takes milliseconds to create a positive or a negative impression. It takes just milliseconds. And I know that sounds crazy, but studies have shown that it only takes one tenth of a second for our brains to form a lasting impression about a person. Now. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's just limited to people that we meet because it's pretty we, we can form our opinion of, of somebody very very quickly but um to me it's always been when I went to buy a new house you know I remember you know my real estate agent would call and say okay yep we got you in the house there's an appointment coming up blah 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 and you know he or she did not find us the house we found the house and said hey get us in this house but I remember walking through the front door of any, you know, every house that I was, you know, potentially going to buy and I could decide if I was going to buy that house within like milliseconds. Like you walk in the front door and you go, nope, this isn't it. Nope, there, there's no way. But the real estate agent would go, well, come on, let's take a look around. You know, let's get a feel for it. You know, you could put a plant there to cover that up. I'm like, no, I'm not going to put a plant there to cover. I knew within seconds if this was going to be a house that I was going to purchase. And the exact same thing happens with people. You, you can tell within seconds if you want to do business with somebody, okay? And, and once that impression is set, it's really, really hard to change. And whether you like it or not, people do judge the book by the cover, okay? So understand, you guys, that how you look, how you sound, what you say, how you say it, even what you don't say, you know, it all quickly sends a signal to your prospects. And all these subtleties form an opinion about what, you know, about you, and it's pretty much set in stone, you know? So... Once that, once that impression is set, it's like, good luck trying to change it. And as you probably guessed, this is where the average networker blows it because their prospecting attempts come across as needy or pushy or they're overly eager, which what? It completely turns people off, okay? So I want you to think about this. Hitting up people on social media is not a whole lot different than striking up a conversation with somebody on the street, okay? Both can instantly position, position you as either needy or pushy, depending on the words that, or, you know, or the tone that you use. And the only way to not put yourself in a position is to change the way you approach people. Put yourself in that, in that negative position is how you approach people. Now, I, I don't know if you guys have caught on to this, and you know all the calls that I do with you guys, but I say pretty much the same, well, not the same thing every single time, but the message is very similar, but I just say it in a different way, okay? So what I'm saying to you guys is, is that you want if in, in, to avoid somebody, you know, judging you, you've got to change your approach and how, how you approach them. And because when you, flip the, when you flip the script on the typical interaction and your prospects are reaching out to you, guys, it's a whole new ballgame. It's a whole new ballgame. You want people to approach you as opposed to you approaching them. And you're sitting there going, well, Steve, what the heck are you talking about? How, how can I possibly make that happen if I don't even know who this person is? It's like, yeah, yeah, I know. And like if you meet somebody in a mall or a restaurant or you know somewhere out on the street, yeah, you might have to initiate the conversation. But now, instead of you sizing them up, they size you up, okay? And how do you do it? You do it through discovery. And I've said this a million times, you guys. It's through discovery. Like when you when you meet somebody, um. Instead of, instead of just blurting out the fact that you've got these patches and, and they can help people and I can help you with this, that, and the other thing. Well, 
why would you even say that? Because you don't even know if they need help in those areas. Okay. So when you meet somebody, it, you know, they, they may just throw up on you about certain things and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do business with this person. But if you throw up on them, they're going to say the same thing about you. And so they're going to form that, that impression of you. If you just go there and just start blurting out things that, that they're not even interested in. And remember, I've heard a lot of people say, yeah, but you don't even know what you're not interested in. And it's like, well, I, what I know I'm not interested in is you telling me that I need help with sleep and with pain and all this other stuff that I don't even need help with. I'm not in pain. I have, I don't have any trouble sleeping. So let me, okay. Let, let or let the prospect tell you that they need those things. And then you can offer the solution so that they don't have to form that negative impression of you the very first time that you meet them, which is the, you're trying to create the right first impression. And you do that through asking questions. So you meet somebody and you start asking them questions about themselves and you, you know, let them come to you because you have a solution for their problem. Because once they start telling you everything that's going on in their life, then they're like, well, what do you do? And then you go, well, I, I think I can help you with those issues that you just told me about. Now they're looking at you going, wait a minute, you can help me with all of these things that I'm having trouble with? And the answer is, yeah, yeah. So show them that it's all about them and not about you. And when you, when you, when you create a negative first impression, that's because you made it all about you. You know, if you stand on the, I've had people, I've honestly had people tell me that during their lunch break, they would just stand on a street corner and pass out flyers to people as they walk by. And I'm like, why in the world would you do that? Or I've had people, you know, say, listen guys, I, yeah, I sent out a hundred flyers for our meeting on, on Thursday night. I'm like, why, why would you do that? Or I sent out a mass email to all of my contacts. I'm like, why would you do that? Because you're making it about you and not about them. They don't even know what they're being invited to. Somebody grabs a flyer, they're like, what's this person trying to sell me now? Instead, you have a conversation with somebody and you get to know what's going on in their life and then you can provide the solution or invite them to a meeting. But you guys, I can be walking in New York City or I can be walking in Vegas. And on the street, people are handing you stuff all the time. And, you know, me being just a nice person, I take it and I walk three steps and I throw it in the, in the, in the first garbage can. And it's like, that's what happens when you approach people the wrong way. They take the information that you give them because you're just throwing up on them and they throw it away in the garbage can three feet past you. It's like, no, 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 no. Have a conversation with people. Get to know them just a little bit. You're trying to create the right first impression, which means that you're a nice person. You're a nice person. And you're trying to find out about them, okay? I don't know if I ever told you guys this story, but I was on, a, um, I was on an airplane one time with just one of my idols. I mean, it's pretty cool when you get to meet one of your idols. Um, sometimes it turns out wrong because you're like, oh my gosh, this person is not what I thought this person was. But I was on a plane and I rode home um, sitting next to Bart Starr. And Bart Starr was the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. He was MVP in Super Bowl I and Super Bowl II. And he sat and talked to me the entire flight. And I couldn't even ask stuff about him because he kept asking questions about me. He's like, Steve, what were you doing in Florida? What do you do? How many kids do you have? Are you married? What do your kids do? You know, where'd you grow up? He kept asking me questions that were all about me. And I'm like, this guy's amazing because people like to talk about themselves. And I'm thinking, this guy really wants to know about me. And that's the kind of guy Bart Starr was. And then, and then the, the impression, you know, my first impression of actually meeting this guy was so positive what do you think I told people? Just like I'm telling you guys right now. I'm telling you what a great guy Bart Starr was. And, you know, when we landed in Milwaukee, he handed me his card and he said, hey, listen, if you ever get down to Alabama, make sure you give me a call. But he made it all about him. 
Okay. Yes, we did talk Green Bay Packers and we talked, you know, Vince Lombardi and he told me great stories of, of Vince and things that, you know, happened behind the scenes. Um, but it was all about me. He, uh, he made it all about me. He led the conversation, which gave me the right, the right first impression of this guy that I, that I absolutely loved, you know, watching play. He was, he was a little bit before my time, but still he was a legend in the sports world. And uh, he made the right first impression with me. So all I'm going to ask you guys to do is make sure that you make the right first impression by not throwing up on people, by having normal conversations with them and discovering what is going on in their life so that you can provide the solution. Because once you make that first wrong impression, the, the wrong first impression, it, it, it stains our industry and it stains our company. Because then people are like, oh my God, these people from Super Packs, they're, they're, they're relentless. They're, they, just, they, just, they just throw up on people. And I think that's what happened with Amway. You know, Amway's got that stigma of you get invited over to their house thinking you're going there for a backyard barbecue and you get thrown into a business presentation. You know, that's, that's kind of the way Amway pro approached it. And that's, the, that's how Amway got a negative, got that negative image a little bit. And we certainly don't want to create that with the company and certainly with you. <music>